Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our final class. Um, I wanted to kind of take us back to um, what I was talking about the first day um, about chatting, that practice I did with uh, Jesse Zaret when making an evening length duet called Your Me, where we would stand in front of each other and try to become each other and find that as we tried to become each other, he trying to become me, me trying to become him, becoming me, we discovered this third thing, which was neither him nor me, um, this Chad, this character of Chad, and how in my work, I became really interested in um, charging up that third space between audience and performer, between self and other, um, the space that is palpable someone might walk into a room and say, oh, wow, the vibe of this party is a little weird, right? <laughs> that thing that we know, but we cannot in some way fully hold or perhaps hasn't even really fully been studied as a thing. That charge is um, the thing that I think a lot of what we're trying to define also in this class or play with in this class, what is that? What is that liveness? Um, how do we know it? How do we know when it's there? How do we know when it's not there? And so I wanted to talk a little bit more about this series of work that I made called Thank You For Coming. And I sent the trailer, I don't know if you had a chance to watch it, but I'm gonna show clips, the uh, trailers from it and talk a little bit about each one because I wanted to share with you some practices and some um, techniques that I've used in making performance that are specifically towards kind of this activation, this activation of a sensibility of co-creation um, and participation. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just show each clip and then I'll talk, we'll, I'll talk a little bit about it um, afterwards. So Savannah, if you could play the first trailer which is from thank you for coming attendance uh, which is the first piece in this trilogy of works piece I, I one of the questions I was that was really strong in my mind was what makes us go from sort of sitting to standing like what makes me put my body in a position of action um, what makes me go from passive to participant and so I structured the 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 environment itself so when you come in, the dancers, there's a platform in the center of the stage, a white, almost like a sculptural base. You sit around, um, you remove your shoes. So you leave a bit of you there and you enter the ritual space of the performance, leaving a bit of you, uh, of your stuff, of your objects behind. 
and you're sitting in the round with the dancers on the center on this center platform the dancers are in an entangled um ever shifting kind of sculptural state of near collapse never not in contact with each other for 20 minutes slowly rotating and in constant eye contact with the audience each part of that section is crafted so that one as an audience seeing that they're seeing something different and laughing or responding something happening so you're watching the show, but you're also watching others watch the show. You're watching these bodies in a labor that is intense and taxing while they sort of invite you in and reach to you gently with their eyes the entire time. So I was just, I was thinking about eyes, eye contact made through gaze and multiple layers of perception and um, empathetic response being set up from the start. And then the dancers roll off the platform, pretty much pushing the audience away. Um, the audience responding responded often in varied ways. Sometimes they would lay down and allow the dancers to roll on top of them. Sometimes they would scuttle away quickly to not make contact. And I am underneath the platform and I begin to take the platform apart and you see that the platform, which looks like a kind of sculpture vase is actually a series of benches set up together and I take the benches apart and I in that labor, I position myself as like a kind of laborer for the work, a stage manager, an organizer, and I move every single bench into a new audience configuration. And often spontaneously, the audience offers to help in their witnessing that labor. While that's going on, the dancers are changing. And, and so anyway, throughout the work, the shifting configuration of the space is shifting the body and bodies of the audience and gently eliciting uh, more and more sensorial engagement. Each audience is given something to hold or something to wear. Um, and then the second section of the piece is this like stop action animation where the performers are like a drum for the ritual, moving constantly in this kind of continual labor of multiple scenes of humanity and so and during that section of the piece we sing the entire audience's names so your name is now pulled into our bodies and you're implicated and pulled into the room it's called attendance we sort of roll call the audience um, and then the piece goes on through kind of another shift where the benches move and become a sculpture around the space. The tights I'm wearing come off and become part of a canopy. The audience is holding and eventually and kind of gently the audience is invited into a final dance. So in each section of this piece, I tried to just shift the contract slightly by shifting the space by shifting um, the sound and where the sound came from, really making it palpable and sensorial and very much an immersive dance that um, there's certainly, and very importantly, always room for no in all of this. Um, and we talked a lot about casting in the audience and like reading and tone and how to approach and how to not go too far. Um, so yeah, that was some of the, I guess just some of the practical in some ways like and creative ways we've I've found in. And it surprised me in this work, the craving. In fact, the longing, we did this piece multiple, in multiple countries. Uh, we did it in Paris, which I was convinced they would like refuse, you know? <laughs> I was very intimidated to like, just have them go, no, 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 thank you. I don't do that um, because French audiences are really not eager to please. And like, I think a lot of American audiences are. Um, 
And I found over and over again that there was like a, a longing that um, and happened more frequently and surprised me more than the refusals did. Um, so then the next piece in this series was um, called Thank You For Coming Play. And in this piece, I really wanted to pull apart uh, language um, and story and how we find ourselves in language and story, how we're co-creating and generating the life we, we are in through uh, the stories that we tell and how language at once is a liberation to give something a name, gives it a space in the world, gives it a legitimacy in some sense. And yet also to name something defines it to a point where it could become reduced and become a trap, right? And so how do we, in this tension of, um, in this tension, how, how, how are we making our world? And how, very much how is gesture the, um, the struggle of language? Like how is it the, the biological um, playmate <laughs> of language? Like even now I'm trying to say something and it's not quite getting out. And there's the way that my body's moving to try and find the thing. Um, and so, I'll play the clip, but there's a whole section which you see just a little bit in the clip in which the performers learned an exact conversation of themselves from rehearsal, like a whole kind of silly, comical, like telling a lot of stories conversation that we had in rehearsal. They learned the gestures, they learned exactly the um, the tone of voice, the breath patterns, and they did it back exactly. Like if I were to try and repeat exactly what I just said to a T. And then like the hardest game of patting your head and rubbing your belly, we try to say a different conversation to hold an entirely different conversation at the same time, which was much more somber in tone, which was about loneliness and alienation, which we had also had, but at the end of the day, exhausted. So inside that inner play, you really saw the shadows and the gaps of language and your eye kind of went through this psychedelic um, process of going like, for me, like what is the tension between what we say and what we do and how are they dancing off of each other all the time? So I'll play the clip from this. This, go ahead and start it, Savannah. This piece is also called play and it is very much about um, making a play and also a state of play and a state of, um, go ahead and play and I'll keep chatting. Um, uh, how is what we wear making uh, us? How are we making our world? How can we become more flexible uh, and malleable in that creation? And the audience also, participates in the story making writing at the beginning of the piece and chanting with us throughout the piece. We also formed a band that like none of us really knew how to play instruments and we like figured out how to play instruments and make up songs.
And uh, this piece in a way was like, a, had the most turmoil in it um, for me. I think maybe, maybe a lot of people experience that in the middle phase of a trilogy. Like when you said, okay, I'm gonna do three works and I'm gonna like kind of carry the, And like successful, and I think, but I felt a lot of um, creative pressure. Dealing with language was really, really challenging because I was trying to get people to look at something else. I was trying people to get the gap, look at the gaps, look at the shadows, look at the body's discord and co-creation with language. But often people would just get into these redu reductive states of just hearing the language. Um, and so I found like a really mixed response to this work um, in terms of being able to enter it and like get into this kind of um, almost malleable state with that the work asked for. Um, and again, pulling the audience in through object, through touch, through participating in writing, through chanting with us, um, and through um, hopefully watching one's perception shift and change as this sort of warped sto storytelling did never really allowed you to settle, never really allowed you to go, oh, I get what this is about. Um, and so then the, the final work, as, in, as you probably can see in both of these, I'm a character in both of these pieces, but I'm kind of like a, a live director. I'm playing me, um, often shifting the space, shouting out live direction, um, jumping into the audience, jumping back out onto the stage, getting up suddenly and doing a part of the piece, almost like a kind of hyperactive audience member slash control freak director, always sort of there, um, which I think just um, enabled another layer to the witnessing of the construct, the constructing of the work some simultaneous to perhaps being swept up in the piece. Um, you're never not aware also of that labor and those dynamics that are the ulterior story of any performance, right? It's the story of how did these performers, dancers, actors make this thing? What's the dynamic between them? Um, I think that's also always as much a part of the show, of the But, you know, I don't know, whatever all those things you're thinking about. Um, and so the third piece, I, um, I stripped away um, a lot of the uh, smoke and mirrors. Uh, I stripped away the, the performers. And it was a piece with me alone with the audience. And this piece called Thank You For Coming Space really became about exploring um, that third space or that charge in absent. Um, and in, in the midst of making this piece, I experienced a lot of personal loss and I had to allow the piece to veer to also suit what I could make at that time. Um, so this third piece is very much dealing with death and loss and absence and grief and how the grieving body goes through a very similar process to the dying body. Um, and in this piece, I use the audience almost like a sensory station to generate this absence, to feel this absence really palpably. Um, and so a lot of the work was about using um, touch, with the audience, um, sound generating. Uh, I make a sound through the audience's feet that is feet stomping that is then recorded and played back into a track that I loop and then sing to. Um, and the space itself, as you'll see, is a kind of um, white cube um, with a system of pulleys in it 
that I pull various weights and objects to various audience. So they're literally like holding the weight. In my experience, grieving is, is this very isolating experience. And so I was curious about how do we make it into a social ritual? What, what would it mean to be held in this? Um, and so, yeah, I'll just show some clips, clips, a clip of that as well. Yeah, and so, yeah, a lot of that work was, um, I guess for me, a kind of mapping of absence. And oh, the other two works were like these were very um, in a kind of jouissance, like just like in a kind of stimulated um, liveness, hyperactive, like sonic, like, um, yeah, like a feast and a festival. And this one was much more stripped down and was about holding and how do we, how do we hold weight? How do we hold space for each other? How, um, and how I literally like put my head in the audience's uh, hands and made my body a very vulnerable body. And um, the audience became its own kind of choreography. Um, in which oftentimes when I would move close to someone, they would reach out their hands. Um, and so it was a lot about how do we also how, what is the performance of care? I just wanted to say like, have a real curiosity about how we hold, how we belong to loss, how we belong to absence. I, I just wrote a few things I'm gonna share quickly. They're kind of stream of consciousness. I was walking down the street yesterday. I walked down all the time, but I came from a different angle and it suddenly appeared to me like a storybook, like a beautiful vista. Uh, yeah, I walked down that street every day. The familiar became new and strange. After days of Zoom meetings, I sat with some friends on the deck and I marveled at one of us speaking and the other two inhaling at the same moment. I felt that sensation of they're there with me now. Meeting a friend, not being able to touch them, hug them hello or shake their hand or hug them goodbye, their face half covered. I retreat into myself. I just do a sort of shuffle, a, a tap dance. I'm floored by the absence of this ritual. What is the shape of loss? How do we feel it? How is this an aliveness? What is deadness? but perhaps an ever-present absence. Is liveness the ability to be present with deadness? I find the closer I am to the awareness and the reality of death, the more alive I feel. And I find myself asking, how am I absent? How do I circle absence with presence? How do I know a thing much more? How are we now filled with absence? How do we How do we belong to absence instead of filling it immediately with more stimulation, more escape? What if we stayed in the absence and came, became intimate with its shape? What then might grow?